Hello everyone, in this video we're going to discuss some string functions that you can use from the Visual Basic environment that is located in Microsoft Excel. In order to use these string functions first off before we start, you must make sure that your macros are enabled and that you have your access set up to the VBA environment. So in this case we have the Developers tab ribbon, go to your macro security, enable all macros and trust access to the VBA project object model. The string functions that will be covered in this video will be the right, left, INSTR, MID, and replace function. Now the very first thing we're going to do, I have already set up a range, range C3, or cell C3, that has a string in it. This will be our test string through the video. I'm going to add a command button here, that, we, that way we can execute the macro that we will be working with. Let me give it a more user friendly term, properties caption we'll change that to click here so the first two functions right and left before we get into that let me first declare our variable we'll call it the string and let's set a value to the string the string is equal to sheets and the name of the sheet that we have is sheet one dot range we set a c3 now first off if we were to play this code let's display the results with a message box, message box the string. There are a couple of ways you can play the code. Number one, you can hit the play button or use your short key F5 or toggle to Excel, take yourself out of design mode and click the button. We now have the value being displayed that's located in range C3. Now let's move on to the string functions. Back in design mode, we're going to go on and double click the command button. I'm going to use the same variable, the string equals write, and we'll put the string. And you want to put the number of characters you want to look for on the right hand side. So we're, let's just say we put the number five, and we'll play the code. We have the five characters that are located or that are last we have the last five characters that are located to the right now the left function will do the same principle same action but of course getting the characters that are on the left play that out and then we should get the word hello and there you have it now the next function that we're going to discuss is the INSTR function this function is a little bit more complex INSTR will look for a certain character or a phrase and return the the number the number value of where the position is of the phrase or character you're looking for. So in this case, let's say we want to look for the first exclamation mark in this string. We can use the INSTR function for that. And to do that, I'm first going to remove the code that we had from the right and left function. And we'll do a message box, INSTR, the variable name, the string, and we'll do the exclamation mark. Now, using the INSTR function, this function is case sensitive. Of course, we're looking at a character here, so it really doesn't matter. But for your, for your reference, when using this feature, this function, it is case sensitive. Let's go on and play this code. And now we know that the exclamation mark is the 12th character within this string. Now let's, let's, let me show you why this is important and why you might want to know how to use this function. Because the next function, MID, the MID function will return a string based on a starting point and end point that you give the system. So. Let's just go on and work on this. Let's just say that you want characters that are located after the exclamation mark in this string. Let me show you how to do that using the MID function and the INSTR function. So if we notice here with the message box, the INSTR function gave us a value. The value was 12. That was the starting position of the exclamation mark. So let's just put starting position equals INSTR, the string, and then the exclamation mark. Now we're going to use the MID function, but we'll display our results using a message box, message box MID. And remember, we're working with the string variable. You want to give it the starting position 
of where we're going to start and this is actually going to include the exclamation mark but let's just do starting position plus one that way we're actually adding one digit or I'm sorry we're adding one value to the total that we have so this should actually be 13 and your ending point let's just say you only want five characters after the exclamation mark you put the five right here and let's go on and um, close it out and let's let's test our results click the button this has given us the first five characters after the exclamation mark and if you notice there's actually a space before the T but let's go on and hit OK now let's just say you wanted all of the characters after the exclamation mark change this five to length of the string this will actually return a little bit more since we actually truncated a few characters but I mean this will give you assurance that you're gonna get all of the characters after the exclamation mark. Let's test our results. We have the space. This is just a test. And my name is insert name. Now the last string function that we're going to discuss is the replace function. This one is very simple. And let's go on and go to our source code. Let's remove what we have already. And what we're going to do is use the same variable, this string, equals replace open parentheses go on and put same variable the string now you want to first type in the string you want to find in this case let's actually use this piece right here insert name we'll copy all of that let's go back to the source code and we want to replace that let's just say with my own name Alex Now if we were to display our results with the message box, let's go on and play the code. Now you have hello world, this is just a test, my name is Alex. One last thing, if in case if you didn't want to display with the message box and you just want to change the C3 value, this would be the way you do it. Sheets, sheet one, dot range, C3 equals the string. Let's go on and execute that code. And there you have it. Now, if you were to click the code again, again, we're using the replace function. This string no longer exists. There is no error handling required for this. You won't get any kind of errors if you were to play the code again. So let's go on and click it. And now nothing happens because the value isn't there to replace and the string remains the same. For now guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.